one does not simply walk into Mordor. The Land of Shadow. Welcome everyone. In today's Shadowcast, we have a lore video focusing on one of the creepiest of the servants of Shadow, the mouth of Sauron. Uh, he was a figure of great mystery in Middle-earth, and as an emissary to the Dark Tower, he came forth from the Black Gate to negotiate the surrender of the Captains of the West. So let's go ahead and explore this mysterious servant of Sauron, whose voice carried all the weight and power of his master. Little is known about the one who came forth before the assembled captains of the West as they stood at the very feet of the Black Gate of Mordor. A delegation from the Dark Tower came forth from the great iron gate of the Moranon. Among them was one who called himself the Mouth of Sauron. He was a servant of great influence and power, the lieutenant of the Dark Tower of Barad-dûr. Little is known of this dark emissary of Sauron, for much of the history of Mordor was lost in the ruin of Samoth Nuar. However, as lieutenant of Barad-dûr, he would likely have been overseer to the men, orcs, and slaves of the Dark Tower, its forges, armories, granaries, dungeons, holding pens, and slave pits. A man of great power that ruled with an iron fist over what was really a vast city within the fortress of Sauron's Mordor. He was likely counselor, advisor, as well as the mouthpiece of Sauron in the throne room of the Dark Lord. The origins of this servant of shadow are shrouded in mystery. We know he was a man born of the black Numenorians. It is probable that he came to power among the dark sorcerers in the cult of Morgoth, which by the last millennium of the Third Age had transformed into a populous religion spreading all through Middle-earth making Sauron its deity. The Dark Lord, taking notice of this powerful sorcerer rising through the ranks, eventually appointed him Lieutenant of Barad-dûr. It was said he was more cruel than any orc, a ruthless adherent who wielded great power, conveying the decrees of his master with neither nuance nor subtlety, but with a terrible brutality. In his position as overseer of this dark fortress, his pride and malice grew to match its towering heights. In the Library of Shadow, it has been discovered, after the fall of Sauron, that there is mention of a lieutenant of Barad-dûr who served the Dark Lord for many centuries. At one time, this servant of shadow was named Mordu, which translates in the black speech to mean one of great darkness or blackest night. It is not clear if this was the same as the one who came forth prior to the Battle of the Black Gate. But being of Numenorian blood, he would likely have been equal in power and longevity as those of the Dúnedain, and through the power of Sauron would have been granted long life. When the captains of the West came before the Black Gate and called upon the Lord of the Black Land, they were greeted with his terrible visage. It is said he came forth with an embassy of soldiery from the Dark Tower 
riding upon a black horse that was huge and hideous, its face a frightful mask, more skull than living head, with flame in the sockets of its eyes and breathing fire from its nostrils. Robed all in black with a lofty helm, the mouth of Sauron looked down upon the captains of the West with malice and contempt. The Dark Lord, choosing to play with his captors before killing them, had his embassy show the captains of the West tokens taken from Frodo in Kirith Ungol. Believing he was a captured spy, the mouth of Sauron intended to use him to set terms of surrender. It is believed that the mouth of Sauron would have been given the West as his fiefdom to rule from Isengard. His desire and lust for power was thwarted by Gandalf, who refused his terms and insulted his pride. The mouth of Sauron, barely able to contain his wrath, unleashed the armies of Mordor upon the captains of the West. The fate of the mouth of Sauron is unknown. Some believe he fled back into the Vale of Udun after being threatened with death, while others believed he fell at the stroke of Aragorn's sword. Either way, he likely perished when the Black Gate and the walls of Udun fell into ruin after the ring went into the fire. In The Lord of the Rings, Tolkien wrote that the mouth of Sauron retreated back into Mordor. This same story arc was used in the animated Rankin-Bass production of Return of the King in 1980. However, in Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, which came out in 2003, Aragorn beheaded the mouth of Sauron in the extended edition of the film. This controversial scene, which was cut from the theatrical version, had many Tolkien fans up in arms over the change from Tolkien's version of the story. The idea of a parlay in times of war and battle is a sacred trust between participants that would have been severely rebuked by those who committed such a terrible act. Killing or maiming during a parlay was considered a war crime and would be something none of the captains of the West would have done, even to the evil minions of Mordor. I think this scene was rightly cut from the theatrical version. Even though I love this moment from the books, and the design of the mouth of Sauron has great merit, it feels like the acting, editing, and storyline in this scene are not the best the trilogy has to offer. I don't know if you have noticed this, but what happens to the mouth of Sauron's head? Not to mention his body and his horse. They simply disappear, which is a major continuity flaw in the film. Overall, it's an odd scene that doesn't do justice to Tolkien's writing. In several alternate histories of Middle-earth, it is said that the mouth of Sauron may have been the commander in Sauron's attack against Lothlorien. It is believed that a vast army of orcs marched from Dol Guldur across the river and through the woods to the very eaves of the uh, elven uh, sanctuary. It would have been possible for the mouth of Sauron to have returned and been at the Black Gate uh, to meet and challenge uh, the captains of the West. The mouth of Sauron is one of the most interesting characters who came forth from the land of Mordor. As a sorcerer of great power, his mind was subtle, his words cunning, and his pride enormous. He was deep into the stratagems and counsels of war that Sauron had long prepared. His command over the vast fortress of Barad-dûr was cruel and brutal, and he wielded great power in the land of shadow. 
for only the Lord of the Nazgul came before him in the favor of the Dark Lord of Mordor. Well, I think that wraps up today's Shadowcast. I hope you enjoyed this look at one of the most intriguing characters in Tolkien's Legendarium. So, until next time, I hope to find you skulking along Sauron's road between the Vale of Udun and the Tower of Barad-dûr. <laughs>